Microsoft has called the Pacific Northwest home for the past four decades. Joining the major cloud tech player here in Seattle, more than 6,000 developers from around the world. All week, engineers will dive into emerging cloud technologies, learn the latest client development techniques, and collaborate with their peers and community. Take a look at how Microsoft is bringing Intel technologies right to the cloud, hear how advances in AI and machine learning are colliding to process massive amounts of data, and take a hands-on look at what it takes to build our connected future. We've come home to Seattle at Build 2019. I'm Brian Westbrook. You're watching Shift, presented by Intel and GeekWire. Satya has done a great job of continuing the Microsoft narrative of intelligent cloud and intelligent edge. Uh, we've all known the amount of Azure infrastructure that they've built out for that intelligent cloud, but I think they provided a next step of detail around what they intend to do around the intelligent edge this year. Talk to us about the strategic partnership between Microsoft and Intel, particularly around Microsoft's Azure. Intel and Microsoft have been partners for the past 30 years, primarily in the Windows PC ecosystem. As Microsoft has shifted to be more of a cloud-centric company, so too has Intel shifted to be more of a data-centric company. And our relationship has evolved as well. Microsoft has moved from being solely a partner in the Windows PC ecosystem to being a major customer of Intel's, both for Azure infrastructure as well as their first-party devices. But more importantly, as we're learning here at Build this week, as they shift to more of an intelligent edge, it's another partnership opportunity for Intel and Microsoft to really build out that Azure Edge cloud ecosystem. Let's talk about that ecosystem and, and particularly why it's important to developers. They want to have a seamless area where they can write applications once and have a consistent uh, user experience for their end customers. The way that Azure can migrate seamlessly behind the uh, infrastructure as a service that Microsoft offers as a public cloud all the way out to edge devices is hugely beneficial to developers. So the foundational basis of AI are really these deep neural networks, super complex and big algorithms that can do things like process images and text and voice and speech. And so now you have to run these algorithms and FPGAs are our uh, way of being able to process that in a fast and, uh, and a cheap way. And so basically uh, Project Brainwave is this layer of software on top of the FPGAs that enables us to accelerate these AI models. So in the retail space, one of the things that we showed was identifying find whether objects were out of stock on grocery shelves. Here's an example of taking existing images, running it through an AI model that's accelerated on an FPGA on a data box edge device, so it's processing locally in your store uh, to be able to identify whether something is out of stock. One of the things that, that data box edge is being used for is to track real-time inventory. Can you show us how that works? Yeah, totally. So at Kroger, what they do is they already have these existing cameras that are in the stores, and they're taking pictures and they realize that if they can put some artificial intelligence and machine learning in the store, they can determine when products are out of stock. It's a really big problem for them because they actually lose more sales to items not being on the shelf than they do to theft. And so what we do here is, so we have this grocery store, and what happens is, let's say I take the last of these frosted flakes, and now over here you can see that it's determined that like there's a, there's a thing out of stock here, right? One out of stock and it knows what it is. And it already knows like where that thing is on the shelf. It can send a notification to the store manager, to the stock people, say, hey, put some more frosted flakes in the shelf. Let's dive into the Databox Edge for just a minute. What technology is in there? I know there's a lot of Intel inside. Yeah, totally. So it's a one use server, like I said, and it comes from Microsoft. And inside we have Intel Xeon CPUs. We have an Intel FPGA chip that accelerates all that machine learning and data, and data analysis stuff that we talked about. And we also use Intel for the, the storage that's local on the device. So the device has a big pile of local cache storage that you can use to copy data to it or you can use to kind of help transfer your data up to Azure. Intel is putting on an AI Academy here at Microsoft Build. What would these developers learn? Today is a data center to edge class. So we hope to show developers how to use Azure uh, cloud services to train a data set and then use software that's been optimized for the latest uh, generation of Xeons uh, and frameworks to have the best training experience on the data center. Um, be aware of which instances to use on Azure Cloud, you know, compute optimized as opposed to just your default free instances. And then uh, once we do that, we go to deployment using uh, Intel's OpenVINO uh, toolkit. Uh, we'll deploy to uh, an edge device uh, as a demo. Um, but today we're actually going to do the uh, inference piece of the AI program using Azure uh, Xeons um, so that uh, people can do everything on the browser so they don't have to pull everything down to their local machine. 
and have install a bunch of software. Intel, OpenVINO, and NGraph are uh, execution providers. They um, basically do all the optimizations of the Onyx model. So, for example, on this device, you have a Mirrored X chip, right? So, which is basically a, a VPU, right? So, it does uh, neural network processing. So, how do you optimize for this hardware? If the OpenVINO sits in middle, and it's able to take the Onyx model from Onyx Runtime and uh, Azure Machine Learning Services, and then it's able to do the optimizations uh, for specific for this, without the developer having to know about it. Where do you see IoT going in the next two, five, ten years? Edge intelligence is a very key trend, and AI, machine learning, and deep learning, computer vision, so these are uh, some of the things that are maturing, uh, and the compute uh, capabilities are also maturing. You can see everyday example today like, um, you know, self-driving cars, right? They use uh, AI a lot. Um, and I see more on, more of that being uh, proliferated. So that's what I see, the continuing trend, maturing of these technologies and, uh, um, you know, more and more applications uh, touching uh, various segments of the industry. How do you see Microsoft and Intel working together to build this IoT future? It's a natural partnership, right? So you have the software and then you have the hardware, the best of both coming together and uh, delivering the promise of uh, AI. So the Intel Optimized Data Science Virtual Machine is a VM offering on the Azure Marketplace, just like any other. It's totally free uh, to use. There's no licensing fees or anything like that. and it provides developers with a wide range of developer tools for doing data science. And the Intel optimized version of this contains highly optimized Python environments for doing TensorFlow and MXNet development. And what Intel optimized TensorFlow really means is that the TensorFlow is actually built to hook into our math kernel library, which accelerates deep neural network primitives. Um, and that's what enables the big acceleration. So if you're a developer and you've already built a, a machine learning model in TensorFlow, uh, you can run it inside our optimized environment and it will run about 7.7 .7 times faster. No code changes, same hardware, uh, than it would in the default environment. I think we may see more uh, specialization like the data science virtual machine. I think we may see more VMs coming out that are targeted to a particular audience and solve kind of a specific problem very efficiently. You know, the Azure Marketplace is such a powerful tool that you, know, you can publish any kind of VM you want with whatever software stack you want for all sorts of different applications. And I think that it's going to help people in more niche fields get started really quickly and make progress really fast. And that's a wrap for us here at Build 2019 in Seattle. You've been watching Shift presented by Intel and GeekWire. Don't forget to like, comment, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you right back here for Build 2020. I'm Brian Westbrook. Until next time.